All right. Oh, so I'm playing through somebody's speakers. Must be addicts. All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome. Episode 25, Planet Xbox Podcast, Weapon Will Edition. Shout out to all those subscribed to the Patreon uh, and supporting this uh, revamped, revised, the fourth edition of Planet Xbox Podcast. So um, I do this every year, try to get somebody from uh, the Weapon Will uh, core group to uh, on the podcast, uh, uh, talk some things, was able to get BG in the middle of the holiday break. Um, so we're going we gonna to get into this. Attic, how, how are you doing? Doing pretty good. Oh. Um, been playing a lot of Baldur's Gate. Ilk, but okay. Are you, what are you playing on PC? Uh, Xbox. Have you experienced the bug? Oh, you lose all your save data stuff? No, not not yet. That's a thing. You said the bug, like you know, <laughs> exactly what you were talking about. <laughs> yeah, apparently it has something to do with like cross progression or something like that. I don't know. And uh, we got, you know, Mr. Weapon Will himself, the boss, BG. What's up, man? What up, y'all? Um, I'm good, man. Just enjoying time off from Weapon Will. It'd be nice, man. People be mad at us, but uh, it's nice. I like it. Damn, if any I mean, more of those leaks came out, we was going to have to come back early. Uh, Jack want to come back <laughs> less than I do. Like, Jack, no matter what happens, Jack like, nah, man. Nah, it, it, it ain't that important. Like, like Jack, oh. I feel like Jack just doesn't want to talk about PlayStation anymore. Like, if it was a bunch of, like, really, really damning, like, positive stuff, Uh, I feel like Jack would be... Like, Jack don't want to come back just to talk about negative shit. Yeah. So, don't get mad at me, uh, depending on when we come back. That's on Jack. We might... Because if nothing happens, we're coming Mm -hmm. back, like, the 27th or something like that. (laughs) (laughs) Oh uh, man! So and, and I'm assuming hopefully you'll be back before then. It, it, hopefully we get an Xbox, you know, direct announcement that would probably cause us to come back. That would be something uh, that would probably happen at that time of year if they, you know, keep up with it because Xbox will start something and be the quick to drop it. So, um, all right. So let's get in, get into it. What's everybody been playing? I mean, I know. Attic, you mentioned uh, Baldur's Gate. Is that the only thing that's been occupying your time? Um, there's a couple achievements I haven't got from the original Final Fantasy VII. Um, like a bunch of like the missable achievements that I didn't care about, like getting Eris final limit break and having what's his name choose you uh, as the cross dresser and uh, taking <laughs> taking Bear on a date in the Gold Saucer. So like I've been replaying the beginning of Final Fantasy. Yeah, I'm three achievements away. I might as well just hundred percent that. Is so, there any game you got hundred percent on? Not really. I don't <laughs> do it too often. I just don't care about like achievements like that. I don't understand. But there are certain there are certain franchises that if I can, I will. And most of the time I don't. I think I think um Persona five Royale was the first game I've hundred percented, and I couldn't tell you how long. You hundred percent that game? Yeah, I got all the all the achievements. Oh, damn. That should be like 200 head. hours. The thought of that makes my head hurt. <laughs> yeah, it, it, and it may, I'm sure it makes BG's head hurt too because he hates that. I mean, I just got the, uh, just a few weeks ago, I got the Platinum in Persona 5 Tactica. You know, it's the first. I actually dropped that game. I didn't like uh, it. And I'm a huge it, fan it, of that franchise. I didn't like the way they narratively told the story. I don't like the side by side animations where their mouth don't even move. It's just like I didn't like that. Like I, I like if they do those type of things, I like like the uh the tactic ogre. There's a lot of games where they're they're visually on the field and I feel like that does better with the sprites telling emotion than just me and kid like side by side talking and it doesn't even show your mouth moving. It's just like the text at the bottom. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I really liked everything about it, but it makes sense because I think Persona, Persona fans of, you know, fans of the mainstream, uh, the main line, they probably don't care about this tactic of game. I'm damn sure nobody, damn sure nobody. Plays. It was a f- the gameplay itself's good. Yeah, but I know nobody cares about it. I know it, it even though 
it's in Game Pass. I know that game flopped, which I'm okay with. I it is what it is. Um, I love. But it. I think Atlas I has like realistic it. expectations of what these games yeah. are going to do too. Yeah. So Man, the, there's right. only one realistic Persona game I would probably be able to beat, and that would be Strikers if they ever report that to Xbox. So Persona Five Strikers. I will never. I won't be they, caught dead playing that. If game. they do that, then I'm on it. You know. Um, but I have to actually check my phone because I've been playing a lot of different things uh, lately. Oh, yeah, Battlefield is what I started playing again. Yeah, so I've been playing a lot of Battlefield. I forgot to ask you. Actually, I, t- I checked out your top 10 games of 2023. I was actually, um, was a surprise, but um, I-, I thought you rounded up a good list. Matter of fact, your um, top 10, and even though I've been flirting with this game for a little bit, but you made me uh, start it sooner. And that, because uh, RoboCop landed, I think, number three on your list or number four. No, it was. I feel like, like it was seven or eight. Does it? I feel like, hold on. Was it? Yeah, it, was, it was like seven or eight. It was seven or eight. They ain't even paying no, 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 because I watched it like, all right, no, because your top three was uh, Eli- Eliza P was number Eliza one. P, number two was Spider-Man Spider. Number three. Well, number three was Spider Man. Oh, your Resident Evil. That shit, that shit didn't count. Evil. But Resident Evil 4 was number two, Spider Man number three, and um, number four was it Tactica? Number four? No. I think it was number five or six. What was number four? I'm looking at it right now. Number four was Dead Space. I think. Dead Space. Okay. And number 10 was, was it Hogwarts? Number 10 was uh, Armored Core, I think. Uh, Armored Core. Yeah. Okay. Armored Core was okay. But Ro- uh, Robocop, which is what I'm um, currently playing now, um, thought it, I, that game, I, See, that's a game like I would over hype and it'll be like average to everyone else. I think it's a a pretty damn good game. That's that the perfect, the perfect double A experience. This is what I want when most shooters come out. That's just what I want. Look good and just give me something good to shoot. Have good animations and blood work. Give me a understandable. I'm not trying to uh, to babysit or solve a bunch of puzzles. Just give it to me straight, point A to point B, and, ju- and just be a halfway decent. And it helps, obviously, RoboCop, classic character. Uh, I'm a big fan. I-, I won't say I'm a big fan, but I'm very familiar with the movies. Used to watch it all the time as a kid. Um, so it bought back a lot of memories. Matter of fact, I'm going to try to figure out if that is that movie is on any streaming services right now because they did everything to the T uh, as far as the timing, the era, and um, what the movie looked like. They, it's like they went one for one. And I can't believe these are the same guys that did Terminator because I started Terminator first and I hate it. Um, but RoboCop, I completely love it. Um, I, I'm, I'm playing uh, Infinity Stash, which is Strash, which is the Dragon Quest game, the uh, action adventure one. Uh, messing around with that a little bit. Um, again, I, I was playing the Terminator, but I kind of like dropped it like halfway through. And um, I'm also playing, I had got a, a, a Quest 3 for Christmas and I got my kids to Quest 2, but I've been playing a lot of uh, VR. Uh, with, uh, there's this game called uh, Asgard Wrath, um, which is... It, I don't know. It's dope. I, th- I think it's probably one of the best VR experiences I've ever had. This is my second attempt at VR. My first attempt was PSVR 1 back in like 20, I don't know, 17, 2018, whenever I got it on. Um, that was my first attempt. This time, uh, I'm having a much better time with Asgard's Wrath. Uh, I, play, I played Moss 2, which is uh, dope. Uh, there's this game called, um, oh, man, uh I can't even think of it. It's like a it's like a, a shooting game. And then there's a um holy crap. I can't even think of the damn name. Oh, this is this boxing. It was free with like the Quest Plus trial. Um, but that shit wore my ass out. I'm actually still in is pain. Boxing is is it the boxing game that you play on the beat? Is it that one? Well, I can tell you. You know, boxing is like one of the most, most one of like the more popular genres on VR because it works so well in VR. It there's does. A, so there's a bunch of boxing games. There's only one that I know of that's it's like to the beat. It's to a, it's a rhythm game. Oh no, it's it's not. Okay. Yeah, no, like because I know my son, he's been playing. The, it's not Creed, right? It's not Creed because my son got the demo. I didn't buy Creed, but this one was a part of the a subscription 
I'm j- determined whether I want to keep it or not. Uh, because they give oh, you about like for that VR, VR they, they because the thing is, I was looking, I was like, oh, they actually want real money for these games. I didn't, I, didn't, I bought VR, I ain't what buy no damn. <laughs> I don't, know, <laughs> I don't know. Like they like they gave me Asgard Wrath two as a gift with my Quest uh, three. Like when you bought when I guess when you buy the Quest three, it comes with that game, and that's a sixty dollar game. I was surprised. Um, there is uh, what's this? Damn, it doesn't tell me. I have to go to my. Damn, I wish it. Oh, here we go. Yeah, the the thrill of the fight. That shit wore my ass out, um, and 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 Hyper Dash, and in and Among Us VR, I, I played, I had a few games of that with my kids. That's that shit makes that shit kind of fun. I ain't gonna lie, <laughs> that shit kind of fun. But um, no, that's what I've been doing uh, uh over the pat over the break and whatnot. However, I am looking uh to get back to podcasts. Why I haven't took a actual break since I um uh came back, Addict. We got a couple things uh, to talk about. And the first thing I want to bring up is this Banjo uh, Kazooie. Uh, I guess, did we get a confirmation or is this more rumors? But BG, you you had some not so kind words about this update. And I'm, I just want to hear everybody's feedback. And this must, uh, they said it's been greenlit uh, last year. AJ, give me, uh, Adam, give me some more insight on this banjo uh kazooie game and who's making it was that been revealed i don't i don't think that's been revealed um it was apparently greenlit sometime at the beginning of last year so i would say around the time i would say it's an activision studio because it, it kind of weird that it wasn't greenlit all the way up till they go into buying activision now i don't know if it's like one of those things where it's like okay we don't we're pretty sure we're going to get Activision, so we're just going to assign them Badger Kazooie. Or it's one of those things where it's like we're going to contract them to make Badger Kazooie, and even if we don't get the uh, the company, we'll still have them finish the game. Uh, I'm very curious to see where that came from, uh, but yeah, it was supposedly greenlit at the beginning of last year. Now, during the the Jeff Grubb, not Jeff Grubb, uh, the Jazz Corden interview, Phil Spencer brought up Banjo fans specifically. So that's why I feel like more people are looking into this particular rumor and, and because, you know, he just recently talked about uh, Banjo fans. Okay. I mean, I mean, my whole my whole thing this morning was <clears throat> simply stating that Banjo-Kazooie is not currently a relevant game. It's not a game that I think a lot of people, uh, you know, currently care about and it's not it's not an insult to the game it, it's been dormant so of course it's irrelevant because it's been dormant since 20 since 2008 technically so any game that's been dormant for that long is technically going to be you know kind of like irrelevant and if we're being real like banjo kazooie banjo i mean it, it had one great game in in the series people the really like Tui too People liked it, but by a lot of accounts, it's it's not the first one is definitely the best. Yeah, I, the, well, I mean the that. the ones that I see people attack is is nuts and bolts. Like yeah, I've yeah, never right. really seen someone have an issue with two. It was yeah, always nuts yeah. and bolts that people talk about. So all, all my point was is that the game was at the height of its popularity on N sixty four, and and after and after that it became less and less. Um, active less and less popular and the, the 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 reason why i think it's at a disadvantage even if it like came out it's not going to be this like hugely popular thing is because one the like i said the demographic that played and cared about banjo kazooie is like around late 30s early 40s that's that's the demographic right if you you know do the math and the age yeah like, yeah you act, if you talk to any any 20 year old gamer they have no idea what the hell banjo kazooie is they're they're not going to care like what's that and and what also works against it is that it's a platformer platformers have become less popular as time has gone on and not to say that it, it would stay just like a pure platformer like the original was but it's still going to be you know some type of platformer and being that it's been dormant and everything like that it's not like it's like perfect dark 
where Perfect Dark is going to, is is a shooter. Shooters it's it's going to re- reinvent itself and shooters have become more popular. So I'm just saying like the circumstances around Banjo Kazooie in the first place it it never it never had like somebody was comparing it to like uh Mario and Mario 64 like bro Mario like people Nintendo's love- made it like their life goal to constantly reinvent that game. Exactly. You cannot compare Mario to 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 Banjo. Even Mario 64 sold like 12 million banjo kazooie sold like three which was good for the, just that's good for that time don't get me wrong but the point is mario has kept on going it's kept itself relevant it's one of the he's one of the most he if not the most recognizable characters ever so you can't do that comparison so that's all my point is like it would go into game pass it, it would be it would be fine but people are pretending like it's this hugely popular character in series that like a lot of people care about him like that you're just being a little bit ridiculous um you don't think like because hasn't when crash came back it was widely accepted popular and crash that had a never stopped yeah but didn't have a it had a long this is was there were there constant crash games since those that the, the original trilogy i know there were spinoffs and stuff like that yeah, after they sold it to Activision, Activision m- made it made them very pretty quickly to the to it to the to their detriment because they weren't really good. They were kind of just like just throwing out crash games, a mm-hmm. bunch of ridiculous ones that nobody really wanted. So they never really they never no, it, it never really stopped. The, there was a before the remakes, there was a bit of a gap there, but Crash always kept itself like relevant and always kept on kept releases. I would have to check like what was the biggest gap. Mm-hmm. And what about like Spyro? Now Spyro wasn't as popular as Crash when they bought it back, but I mean, I can't. I can't. I don't know the stats of where Spyro sits or how that uh, went. I know they did the uh, the remake of the of the trilogies, yeah. but it hasn't spawned a new Spyro game just yet. Uh, I, I see what you're saying, Banjo. I don't think Banjo is all that uh, popular. I tried playing all the Banjo games, and I can't do it. I couldn't tell you if I liked it. To me, I know the original one was popular because I don't know which one came first. Was it Mario uh, 64 or Banjo? But, Mario 64. Okay, so that was more like a, a take on to Mario 64. I don't 64. know. They, me, I feel like they... Let me double check. I feel like they were I'm similar sure games. Came out first, though. I mean, yeah, Banjo was '98, I think. Uh, '64. Mario '64 came out in '96. Okay. And Banjo Kazooie came out in '97, so a year apart from each other. Okay. okay. Makes sense. And I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I want to see him do no, it because. Hold up. That that that's when he appeared in something else. Uh, when did the actual oh, release date? I think the actual game came out ninety eight. Yeah, ninety eight. Apparently, he he was a character and uh, says uh, who are both controlled by the player. Bento originally made his debut as a playable character in the nineteen ninety seven as part of the cast of Diddy Kong Racing. <laughs> uh, so he he was actually in the game. Uh, he he was He's in Diddy Kong Racing. I don't know. M- maybe like they were making that game and they were just putting him in there just to gain a little bit of notoriety. So when the actual you know game came out, he had a little bit of a fan base. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think he might have been an unlockable character because I love Diddy Kong Racing. I don't think he was there from from the beginning. I think you probably had to unlock him. I think. I'm not sure. Oh, learn something new today. Um, but no, I mean I think they, I, I want them. I want platformers to survive but platformers aren't as popular as they uh once were um they don't come out frequent right now what we get for platformers if nintendo ain't releasing like their tempo hits is usually some sort of double a or indie attempt uh but i'd like to see it i'm curious if uh, i if activision is doing it i can see the people that did you know spiral and crash taking taking over that yeah because like Banjo is a lot of these fan bases that are exactly the same, like Silent Hill fans. <laughs> that all these fan bases make themselves seem way bigger than they actually are. Like, I feel you. I, yeah, Silent Hill, Sly Cooper, 
a lot of these like older games, like you would think it's like, you know, over a 10 million <laughs> fan base, the way, the way you see people talk about it. And it's like 2 million I, people bought is the most popular, the game, one game has ever sold. I, I feel you, but I do feel like with Xbox going out there, cause I, I agree with you. I don't think that it would sell like that. I, I do think it would sell. Uh, you know, especially being in Game Pass, I think, uh, you know, put it on Steam, it would sell there. Uh, you know, probably sell a couple million, but like combined yeah. throughout the whole thing. And, and to me, it's like, you know, that what was the number one thing that was sold to us on investing in Game Pass? It was we can take more risk and make more stuff that might not necessarily make money because we can offset the cost with Game Pass. And to me, if you're not going to use, if, if you're by that word, you're not going to use it on probably one of the most iconic things. Because regardless if you don't think Banjo Kazoo or Banjo Kazooie, not like as far as like people that's been gaming for a while, almost everyone knows who Banjo Kazooie is. It's just some of us haven't played it. Uh, and I think that as far as like the icons that Xbox owns without, you know, the Activision Blizzard King stuff, Banjo Kazooie is, is a prominent person that could potentially deserve a remake. I think what they should do is they should remake uh, Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie, put them both in one package and sell it for $70. And, and you know, see how that works. Uh, because I think both of those games together, and they kind of like seamlessly go from one to the other, I think that would have a lot of content. And I think it would be worth, uh, mm -hmm. worth that kind of value. So that's like, what, $30 each? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's in Game Pass too. And, you know, I think, see how that goes. And if it flops, don't invest. Don't make a third one. You know, because I don't yeah. think Nuts and Bolts needs to be invested into just make another game in general. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I got to go. I'll be right back. Yeah, they could make a game that really that really changes, uh, I guess, the image and what, and, and what people think about as uh, Banjo-Kazooie. You know, because this many years later, you know the what what we envision banjo to be could be very different mm -hmm. when they release it now that's that's possible um but there was a spiritual successor um ukulele ukulele yes which came out so that's like a little sample size as to what it would maybe play like how it would perform and all that and um it did it did okay i think that was a kickstarter game too yeah and it did okay people people funded it i think it sold at least Two million, I, I think. believe they did. Uh, they did the original Kickstarter, but then they have a follow up game though of uh, ukulele, if I'm not mistaken. I did this morning, they had a sequel that came out not too long ago. Um, uh, it might have been some DLC or something, I don't think it was a full sequel, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it's um, yeah, I, I agree with what Addict said in terms of what they can do is they can remake it pretty much like how they did the Crash trilogy and um the spiral games just uh i think that would be a good attempt just to gauge interest it's not too expensive um and um to get people prepared but then again i don't know if that game and even with Yoke ukulele i didn't really uh care for that i don't know if the gameplay the n64 gameplay style translates well to this generation of gaming that that gameplay that style that 90s mid 90s uh 3d platforming i it can't i don't know if there's a if there's a way of uh, uh how modernizing if that it played like yeah if it played like that today it would be trash yeah <laughs> no i don't know what none of them say that playing like like games like how mario 64 was donkey kong 64 uh banjo that style trash get it out of here nobody yeah. i don't care some of these retro merchants would would swear oh i love it so much but nobody else would care so it, but i definitely think you can you can translate banjo to play very differently today i i, I do think you can translate it you would have to it would be a, an overhaul it it, it, it yeah. would have to be a reinvention of of banjo it, it wouldn't be what it was then it would it would have to be something new that we haven't played uh played before so but that's for them to figure out yeah. i don't know exactly what you would do um to actually make it uh exciting and um you know acceptable for this generation that's going to be playing it um but that's for them that's for them to figure out they can do it they get paid the big bucks 
Um, question I want to ask you. I know um, no addict did a video on this. Um, there, I think it was reports that uh, Blade, or I guess on some internal internal schedule that it was out. Uh, they're aiming for 2027, and obviously we heard about you know, Wolverine. There's always been um, discussion over the past couple years, um, especially coming from like the Xbox side of announcing games too early, right? And um, and I'm thinking about I think it was what year was it? 2017, maybe 2018, when Phil Spencer was like, "Oh, they you know, trying to get away from announcing games five years in advance." But, you know, ever since they had, like, their, you know, ac acquisition spree, every game they've announced is, it seems to be, like, a half decade out. Uh, and would obviously, like, Hellblade 2 was announced uh, December 2019, right? And we'll, by the time we get it, it'll be 2024. That would have been five years. <laughs> that um, same thing with State of K, uh, uh Three, we don't know when that's coming. Um, Perfect Dark, we don't know uh, when that's coming. Um, and now with Blade, it's not like they announced it with a pairing of a movie. It was just like, here it is. But with a target date of 2027, what is the purpose of announcing like games? I don't understand the hype. Or the drive or the reason behind it, announcing a game that is so far out. Like I I, I guess like, I don't like the, that's a that's a long wait. It's like okay, cool, you're working on it, but I feel like that's a very long wait. Even for like Wolverine, I feel like even what we saw was some of some of what they showed was impressive uh for, due to the leaks, but they they're targeting 2026, and I'm like, that's kind of crazy for these games so i don't understand what's the point it's like just like i don't understand the if you're not going to advertise it for like three or uh, four years it's like okay this is it and then you'll see us in uh a few years last of us uh same thing what is the what do you think is the um the logic behind that because to me i'm starting to get frustrated uh with this so when i i get excited that they announced okay they're working on blade great they're finally getting the marvel game and then on the back, and I'm like, well, damn, this shit is like, like by the time I get to play this, I'm gonna be in my forties. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think Xbox is is excited because they they have, you know, starting to piece things together, right? Yeah. So you know, they had their last showcase, um, Avowed, and what's what's that game that clock a clock something? I don't even remember the, the Clockwork clock, clock Tower Revolution. Yeah, Clock Tower Revolution or Clockwork so, Revolution. Oh, my bad. Yeah, all these little games, um, they're starting to piece it together and piece their image together and, and their roadmap and everything like that. So I feel like they they probably felt like they couldn't do it before because if you announce a game really far out and then it doesn't come out, that I think that's the real issue. But if you announce a game really early and it comes out and, and it's amazing, that two of those two things, if it comes out and it's amazing, I think people forgive it and don't even care that it was announced for three, four years, you know, in, in advance because it turned, it, it, it worked out well because that's, that's what PlayStation did last generation. They were announcing yeah. games like sometimes three years, three, four years before it came out. But when it came out, it was a banger. So people were like, all right, okay, I'll, I'm okay. We're waiting four or five years from an announcement. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, that wasn't working out for Xbox before, but now they, they get in, um, all these little pieces, you know, they're, they're quality games. It seems, you know, they're studios, everybody's working on something. And we just got, we finally just got a Marvel property. I don't think we should, they probably, they just feeling confident probably. Like we yeah. don't feel like we should, we should sit on this. Things are coming together well for us finally. So yeah, I think, I think that's why they're, they're, they're doing it. They're feeling confident and they're feeling good about themselves finally. Um, but I don't, I personally don't mind the, the, the far out release date. Um, as long as you got other things, yeah. other things, you know, coming along earlier in, in, in the road. And we have confident that when it comes out, it's going to be worth, you know, I think that cures all, all worry for people. Um, you mentioned, uh, you know, 
Xbox finally acquiring like a, a Marvel um, license. My thing is, uh, we were having a discussion about this, and I know there was like when some of the stuff leaked for like the Marvel deal that PlayStation got, um, and like it having some of these like uh, stats that they had to hit, they had to maintain what six million in sales and stuff like that. Uh, we know that they're you know going to be having the X Men uh, games uh, as well as Wolverine and, and the Spider Man. So uh, we kind of have an idea of what's available. You know to xbox should they decide to acquire more marvel licenses but we were discussing about the blade one last week and there was disagreements because i don't feel one because of the ip and the character and the popularity uh i don't think microsoft or bethesda's deal with uh, marvel for blade is anywhere close or equivalent to what playstation has in place with you know Wolverine or X Men, and I just kind of want to know your thoughts about it because everybody once those that you know those docs came out, people were like, uh huh. Well, Blade's not going to be uh, exclusive because it's not going to sell six million because they assume you know Blade has to sell six million. What What is your thoughts on that? I don't know if we ever. I don't think we kind of like shared words on that. Um, so I assume because just the way Phil Spencer talks about things, mm -hmm. um. It's, it's probably a little bit more challenging or they may not get the same benefit of the doubt um, as PlayStation. I imagine that the contract that Marvel gave, gave PlayStation for Wolverine is a bit different than the contract they gave Microsoft for uh, Blade. I don't know in, in what way, but Microsoft may have to give up more or they may have had to prove their ability to sell more um because yeah playstation is the market leader and you know they look at all those stuff but I, all that stuff but game pass you know game pass is probably something they can boast um to help them out in in in, in those in those like deals and, and making deals and everything like that um game and game pass really like throws a wrench in things when it comes to like really measuring success yeah because it's we a lot of the times we we have no idea if a game is a su success or not right so and and i don't and i personally don't like that i feel like we should know what's a su success and and, and and what isn't um not for like console war but it's just something i think we sh as gamers we sh we should know because like for example from the leak we learned that Sunset Overdrive literally made like five hundred dollars profit. Well, we all, people always wondered why we didn't get a sequel. Yeah. There it is. Like yeah. that's that's why that's why like I think it's cool and good for us to like know what stuff sells and yeah. you know how it performs. People be like, oh, sales don't matter. Uh, it does. Five hundred dollars on a profit. Like, okay, it, this makes sense now, right? So, yeah, it's, it's, I'm sure Blade will be, is going to be. I, it's it's. I mean the the logo wasn't on the logo wasn't on there. Mm -hmm. Um the game pass wasn't on there. Do I think it's going to be exclusive? Yes. Um I do. As as far as how it'll do on Xbox. Once again, it, it's, it, it's 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 hard to how, how would we know? That's that how how would we know? I'm it's going it's going to every everybody's going to play it in yeah. game pass. Uh but I, I assume What are we talking like, about? Sorry, I had like an emergency stuff happen blade um oh. yeah it because it, 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 it's like okay marvel i'm sure they have some type of uh you know um standard okay we want blade to sell this many million right and uh or in game pass whatever the metric is for game pass it has to do that it has to do that and i'm sure it'll it'll do i'm sure it'll do fine it won't will it Will it match Spider Man? No, because nothing can match Spider Man. Yeah, you know. So that's that's not as far as it comp comparisons to Wolverine. Like I said, I'm I'm more. Ex I, I think Blade as a character is is a much more interesting and cool character, right? Um, not that Wolverine's not, but Blade is just way more interesting to me. Wolverine is still the more popular character than, mm -hmm. than Blade. So yeah, it's it's. It's, both of those are gonna are gonna do better you know that's that's just how it is but at least at least from a sales metric yeah you know, which 
we won't know um, on Xbox part because they don't report any of that stuff. So yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, it's, 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 it's a confusing thing. The way I think I would consider it, and like it matters to me, it's just I'm just a man with an opinion. I guess how a game would be perceived or be, or should be considered successful while uh, being like, you know, a Game Pass title. I look at like, all right, while being in Game Pass, I was like, how popular were you in Game Pass? But how popular were you outside of Game Pass? Like, you know, Starfield, number one seller in September, MPDs. Uh, I find that successful being a, a, a top play game on Steam, top purchase game on Steam, top purchase game on Xbox while being on um, Game Pass. Uh, same thing with uh, uh, Forza Horizon. We know uh, prior like it man it was it ended it was one of the top 20 best selling games of uh 2021 while in game pass so there's ways to um to do it and whatnot and then there's like it for example i can tell you this like games like and and this is heartbreaking uh to say but games like uh uh gears 5 and uh gears 4 warrant that well gears 4 i think that was pre-game pass gears 5 wasn't all that successful it was in the top it was in the top 10 i think in uh mpds um but when you factor the name gears of war and gears of wars is like a that's a that's an mpd that's the number one seller you know all things considered so in 2019, when, you know, Gears 5 dropped, you know, it was a top 10. It wasn't like top five in sales. That was that was more so like, OK, this thing didn't do this got cannibalized. A lot of people played it, but not a lot of people bought it. And but then you consider games like, you know, see if these stay the K during the early days of Game Pass who, that managed to be like top one or top two and their uh, release months while in Game Pass, I think that was during like the test period. Game Pass was probably just shy of 5 million users or something like that when they released. So they, they're, they're probably just a testament to timing. But um, I feel like we, we, we've had examples of games that we could deem successful while in Game Pass. But at the end of the day, it still comes the results of, OK, how did they commercially do? How did they actually sell outside of uh game pass some games are going to be are going to be undeniable and, and and sell uh despite being um in game pass and um some would just only have game pass success and and i guess that success is determined by the publishers and the developers at that point attic you're on mute. you mute i think what it comes down to is how much money they can back up from the subscriptions and cover the cost for stuff. You know, I, I do think that when it comes up, you know, we talked about it last week. I do think Blade's going to be one of the situations where Microsoft knows Blade isn't as popular character as something like Spider-Man. So I don't think the expectations is quite high, but I do agree with you, uh, BG. You mean smooth disagree, but there is some form of internal metric that Disney and Marvel expect to be made, even though it might be half. They might expect only we only want you to push two million, and and I personally feel like because Microsoft's kind of doing a, a battle from up from from battle uphill kind of thing, they'll probably pay all that up front. Yeah, uh, because I I think they they got the money to do that, and I think right now they know how much people have been wanting a superhero uh, game on Xbox. So I expect Bethesda and Xbox have already paid. This is what you expect to make on our platform. Because to me, why would some a company like Disney and, and Marvel even agree to a Blade going on Game Pass unless the money that they want to make has already been paid and Microsoft pays less royalties going forward on the actual game itself because they paid the majority of the cost up front. Yeah, because they, they definitely have two different interests, you know, get... Marvel and Disney, they just want the cash straight up. They they want the profit from the game. How much money? They don't care how you make the money, whether it's through subscriptions or sales. Um, they just want they just want the money, you know, as a as a result of it. Um, well, meanwhile, Microsoft they probably don't care about the money at all. They care about the subscriptions. 
that that are going to come from it you know, we assuming we assume it'll be in Game Pass. You know, the subscriptions. That I think they care about them. Uh, they they care about selling because they wouldn't make these pre. Because what they did with Starfield, where you pay thirty dollars and you have access to it, the uh, the early access thing, but you don't own the game. You just pay. You literally just pay to get access to it. There's no reason to do stuff like that if they didn't value the money that those platform the, these titles can bring in. And I think that's going to be a standard going forward. Look. You know, if you want to buy, if you want to play the game early, we'll let you play the difference that you would pay if you own the copy from, you know, the $60, $70 retail to whatever the ultimate edition that requires you to get access to that game. That's my personal opinion. What's going to happen. They're going to do that a lot more because apparently they, they made a pretty penny off of Starfield off not only the $100 edition where you get access to it early, but also it was like $30 or $40 that you get access to Starfield like it was like a week before the game came out on uh even if you were just a, a subscriber to game Pass. obviously you got like pre-order bonuses and stuff like that but i do see them doing that more often to try to offset that because here's my thing mm. does game pass catalyze sales of course it does but i do think they're if you give those the people that are willing to pay that 40 dollars, they're gonna buy that game if game pass was there or not People like BG, he's a he's a toss up. He's a content creator, so you might get him to buy Starfield, but most of the time he's gonna wait for Game Pass. People that are actually excited about certain titles like Fable, I'm not waiting for a Game Pass thing. If they give me an early access bag where I can mm. give them some money and play it early, I'm doing that. <laughs> and I think that's how they're offsetting the Game Pass thing, where it's like, look, we understand that some of you weren't going to buy Fable regardless. But the ones that were going to buy Fable will let you access it seven days early by giving us half the price of the game. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a pre. It's it's you're collecting your monthly uh, fees that you're always going to collect, and you're getting a premium on top of it, right? It's an extra like, all right, we release a surge game. All their major games will do that. We know Forza did it. The Horizon did it. Uh, we know. Um, Starfield did it, Starfield did it uh, for sure. And I don't see that going away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See... especially if they, they got a lot uh, riding on the game. We know, you know, Hellblade's probably going to do it um, and whatever they got uh, coming in uh, 2024. So uh, that's the way they, they, they give like that premium effect, that premium feel. And they still get the Game Pass money. And you still get the uh, Game Pass money for sure. Um but yeah, I know, but the reason we were away at it, I was uh, talking about the 2027 release and I get kind of uh, annoyed with these uh, game announcements and they're like half a decade away. And but uh, BG provided like a, a good point why it's good for Microsoft to do it now, because now that they're getting their things in order. Um, go ahead. But I do want to hear your take from it. OK, maybe. BG, you, you type in on this. I don't know how you feel about this. I don't mind early, like five, six year announcements. Yes. Yeah, but I don't want to see I don't want to see your damn game again till you show me gameplay. You get one CGI from me, and I won't say shit. I'm like, okay, Blade's being developed on. I don't want to see Blade next year. I don't want to see Blade the year after that. The next time I see Blade, I better see gameplay on the on on the on the, the screen. And then uh, you know, the only ca caveat I would give is like you show me Blade in a, a couple years without gameplay, like a story element. Something that's going to evolve what you originally showed me. Do not show me another CGI that's not going to put any type of context to what's going on in this game. I don't like when they do that. It's like the first trailer, okay, CGI, you show in the game. But after that, don't show me shit till you have something relevant to show. And I think Xbox is in a, is in a, in a good position because they own so many studios now that in the past they've had to do that, show the same game over and over again, multiple E3s. Uh, you know, Sony actually stopped doing E3 in my opinion because they they didn't really have a bag to constantly reach in and people were complaining, why you show me Last of Us Part Two three years in a row? So I think that's why they kind of like pan back on events and stuff. Plus it saves them a bunch of money. You know, Microsoft has enough studios constantly developing these games where they can consistently show Blade and not have to show him the next couple years and still have content to show. Yeah, that was essentially what I was saying. They got a, they got a, they got a library, you know, a, a bag, um, you know, to, to pick and choose from. And like I said, as long I was saying it's smooth, as long as nothing gets canceled, 
if you announce yeah. three, four years away, people people are going to have short memory. They're gonna, not going to remember, oh, you announced this game four years before it was finished. When it comes out, as long as it's good, people are going to be like, oh, you remember that fire game? They don't, nobody's going to care about how long it, how people, long ago you announced People it. get annoyed when they show, let's say they show, they show Blade now, then they show Blade next year, yeah. and they show Blade the year before after that. Yeah, That's think. when people get annoyed. Is when people yeah. when you see the same games at the same events for years at a time, and the reason that you're seeing these same games is because these games were announced way too early. But as long as Microsoft stays away from that, they show Blade when they have something relevant to show, regardless if it's a story trailer, montage of gameplay, or just straight up blown gameplay. People won't even look. They won't care. But if they do show Blade next year and the year after that, I don't think they would do that. That's when people would be like, "Yo, you're showing this too soon." Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the art of making game trailers, you know, kind of been lost. They, you know, uh, game trailers are supposed to tell you something, show you something you haven't seen before, give you context, give you information. But people don't be caring as long as like you just put out a trailer. People will accept anything as a as a freaking gameplay trailer. Uh, Kojima, Kojima has very much proved that. Yeah. So. And ever, uh, uh, ever wild it still comes to my mind when I think of these, uh, game announce, uh, announcements, uh, ever wild was the first Xbox series games announced even before Hellblade. They showed this at their XO event. Um, and we, we still don't know what it is or when it's coming or if they're still even working on it. So Hopefully that game doesn't get uh, canceled, um, uh, unless Attic, you got some information to talk about Everwild or not? Game? Everwild, rare is Everwild. I, I haven't heard nothing about Everwild, and that's kind of bad. Mm -hmm. If I haven't heard nothing about Everwild, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think it's canceled because what I've been told is like the amount of money that Xbox makes off of Sea of Thieves is ungodly. Really, like it's ridiculous, and and I think that like. If there are a, you know a set of people making Everwild in the studio, uh, the best the the best way to kill morale in the studio is just canceling the game. Yeah. Uh, if the studio decides they don't want to work on it, Moon Xbox decides as well. That's different. Then go ahead and get rid of it. I don't think they're going to do that because I do think that you know Rare has become kind of like an expert at a certain style of uh, games as a service, and I yeah. do think that what they see at see uh, see at these they could see okay once if ever wild hits so that's why i think that you know they'll continue funding it i think they need to just cancel it because clearly they don't know what direction they want to go with it that's fine but at the same time like how long can you keep riding on the sea of these train and it makes a lot of money for them it's ridiculous how much money it makes for them but it's just like i don't care about that but i understand from like a monetary value mm -hmm. microsoft's looking at that and they're like if they did this with sea of these can they do it with ever wild can they can they get to games of service printing money? And I think that's why they continue to support it. Okay. So uh there was also um words from I don't know if it was a PR or a developer uh that told that told us to uh look out for next year in regards to like uh gears. Uh I don't know if a, like a gears announcement and whatnot. I know Attic had a video about this, but I did not see this uh, announcement or what it was, but we haven't heard from Gears in, well, technically since 2019, it was the last Gears, and then they did their little, um, you know, the Hive Busters the year after. Um, so it's been a, a decent amount of time between um, uh, Gears games, and um, and we know Coalition has been working on unreal engine um five they've done a couple tech demos and whatnot and we know the next gears game is going to run on the latest on unreal engine but attic man what are we expecting uh from gears this year we we getting a new gears announcement or are we going to get this ever so rare marcus phoenix collection that everybody thinks is happening i think we can get a marcus phoenix collection i think the best case scenario would be a marcus phoenix collection announcement and then after that oh and we have one more thing for you and it's a trailer for gear six uh you know uh, and one, once again you know show me a cgi you don't even got to give me a release date even if that sucker comes out in 2025 just show me one time uh and, and 
just to get people hyped that it's being developed on and just let that go in hibernation until you're ready to show other things. It's like I said, Gears, Perfect Art, Blade, Outer Worlds 2, uh, Elder Scrolls 6, Avowed, like all these studios making games, games that, you know, uh, Clockwork Revolution, you could easily rotate announcements around and not use the multiple things over and over again. Like, I'm low-key upset that they keep showing Hellblade as many times, mm -hmm. and, and, and they still haven't showed any evolution of combat. So it, it's just like, just don't show nothing until you're ready. You know, I, I think that what they showed of Hellblade is fine, but it did look more of the same as the first one. And, and it's just like, you know, it, if it is, the if, if that game does have like more depth gameplay, it, when it comes out and it turns out that everyone's like thought process was wrong in terms of that, then it's like, damn, but it's like, what else do you expect the fan base and people on the internet to think when you're showing similar parts of the game that look almost identical to the first one? Like, you got to be realistic yeah. with the matter. You know, show stuff that you, that the people want. The problem is when they make these events and stuff, they make them for the masses, and the masses aren't watching. Uh, they, they act like all the casual people, my brother's watching it. None of them are watching these events. The, they might catch, like, a Twitter announcing the game, but that's all. I think they need to jump out the window with Gears 6. You know, like, um, I think they're a, a little bit afraid to lose their core fan base. Um, and I respect that, though. I do. Because it, it's just like, look, like, these people, either that or just after Gear 6, make something new. Like, stop trying to, to you know, make... Stop trying to make an apple uh, an orange. Make it an apple pie. Like, expand on it in the core aspects that makes it that game. Don't try to make it something it's not. Because I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I love the, like, the little side quest and very... I, I, I can't even... It's not RPG elements, but, you know, because that's, uh, you know, giving a little bit too much sauce. But the direction of where they were going in with it, possibly having you know um RG rpg elements and you know doing things outside of the the linear path i really like that stuff yeah so i think they should jump out the window go go crazy with it um because i still think it, it keeps it gears but it's just a more expansive gear. i feel you and, i like you know. when it comes to gears 5 i really really love the snow region and I felt like the desert, they just try to mimic the snow. They didn't try to make it any more unique. Like, you know, when, when you go to these other regions, they got to feel different. Like, you know, there were the aspects of the uh, of the desert region that were different, like the lightning storm, if you guys remember that. Yeah. Like, that was cool. But it's just like, yeah. I felt like Act 4 is where that game dipped. And, and if they could have kept what they did for the snow region in Act 4... Because I felt like Act 5, and maybe it's just me, so when you was running for that big POV creature or whatever his name was, yeah. I felt like that chapter was good. That that was the yeah. essence of old years, was going from narrow, uh, narrow uh, corridor to corridor, barely surviving, people dying left and right. That is what the core gears was. And, and to me, the only hiccup was that desert area. Uh, I mean, the, I think the cast also, they haven't... You know, they didn't do the, I guess, the best job at, well, first of all, it, it's it's hard to make a, a fan base love the new generation mm -hmm. of characters over, over even, you know, equal to the, to, to the original. Yeah. You know, Marcus, Cole, Mar Marcus, you know, Cole, um, Baird and the rest of them, people are going to like them no matter what, because they were the originals. No matter what amount of writing, yeah. good writing you did, people were not going to like the the new cast as as much. But I but I think people are a little bit too harsh on them. They're they're not like terrible characters or anything like that. But they've I don't think the writing has ever fleshed them out um, enough to make people ca care about them. I I think they're cool. Like Kate, I, I think she's great, and Marcus. The only person I think like is like <laughs> Dell. I'm like uh, he's there. You know, he he's there. He's they didn't there. really flesh out Dell a whole lot. And I think they tried though. The games, yeah, but the games generally about JD and Kate, their yeah. family. Uh, actually, um, well, Gears Four, you know, uh, J uh, they gave you a little bit more of, of, of JD before leaning into to Kate, and then Gears Five was just 
all out like Kate, which is she's more of an interesting character. But I think through Kate, through story with Kate, because you spent your time with Dell, which allowed him to open up and their uh, uh, paths to open up. Um, I'm gonna tell you, but I took it a different way. I took the time with Kate and Dell. Mm-hmm. Is they're using Dell to expand on Kate, not the other way around. Like the conversations is meant to show you like a compassion side of Kate, not necessarily what Dell's mind or, or, or motivations are. No, 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 I get what you're saying. Like, cause the, the story, yeah, but, but Dell being that, so it would have been a uh, cliche to have her with JD, right? That would just be okay. JD market son, you got to keep him part of the game, but they, you know, completely removed him from about what, what, what 60% of the game. And yeah, he you're, was only in the desert area. Yeah, and you and then you have like pretty much Dell uh there as like at least a character to at least try to to grow on you. Um I'm I do want them to go go full on out on that RPG attempt. Uh because I, I and that those were my favorite parts of Gears, like venturing off from the main quest, finding things to do, little work. And the thing is they didn't overdo it. Um it was a good ex- that desert area, man. That's was, the only thing they fucked up on was that desert area. It was, it was a good a, a good a, a attempt, and I liked how they diversified like uh, the boss fights. They bought in the, the wardens, which I thought was good, um, and they added some you know hand to hand combat in the game, which opens the game up. So hopefully they and they can and they can do it. I think it will work. Um, I, I definitely want them to go really all the way with that open world or that not not open world but like that wide game (laughs) like this uh this open version uh of gears very uh uh because i know with uh judgment i know they tried to go like the vertical way um and then now with gears 5 they kind of kind of like you know fit in because after a while you know there's so many times you can do like gears you know one two and three and four but um the thing about like the original Gears trilogy, uh, the Gears trilogy is that they had some epic ass and en- encounters that I thought was um, great. Like the first time you you ran into the Berserker and she's she's chasing you through the building. You got to get the ceiling and shit out so you can get some sky shots. You can use the hammer of Don and whatnot. I thought that thought that was epic. They need more of those moments. They got to get crazy with the creatures and with the. Um, uh, with the creatures that, on that planet and, you know, flesh out uh, the characters and bring more of that RPG element to the game and whatnot and while also maintaining the, the co-op ability. Just get creative. Do some stuff you've never done before in Gears, like in terms of level design, set pieces, story. Just, just you got nothing to lose. Try some random off-the-wall crazy I, I think nonsense. I think the, the big lose. issue... I think the big issue too is they don't want to, they don't want to like ex- experiment on like the last game because I don't think that they're going to be doing another Gears. I, I think this is it. Like after Gear Six, I don't think they're going to be. Re- but here's the thing: it's like, do you wait till the last installment to try to drastically change things up? Like I don't know. Like I, I can understand from like. From their perspective, people really like Gears 5 and 4. You know, people, obviously, they could have... Now, you could take the the foundation they built with Gears 4 and exp, uh, Gears 5 and expand on it, but I don't think they need to change anything drastic because it's the last one. Now, that if, if they're, if they're going to change stuff drastically, it should have been in 4 because that was the new we title coming change. into the franchise into the newer franchise but to me you've come too far to start changing things up drastically now they can expand on the open world aspect expand on more side characters kind of give more of a you know a lore building thing but to me the, the the main point should be gameplay story and character development i don't care how they do it those need three need to be the the definition because you know what piss off people more they do all this expansion people love some of the new ideas that they've done but then they screw up and drop the ball when it comes to how the game narratively is told. And then you got this game that, you know, they're trying to like put all these, uh, all these, what's what I'm looking for. They're trying to put all of these narrating uh, stories they've been telling for the past 10, 15 years. And then 
there's nothing to do at that point because it's the last one. You don't got to redo because I think yeah. after this, they're going to do something different. I, yeah, I just, I, I mean, I agree with you, but I just think that they, I feel like they're going to regret it if they play it too safe. And if this is actually the last Gears, I think all of them should be happy at the end of the day, they should be happy and said, you know what, we tried everything we wanted to try and we didn't hold back on this last one. You know, because if, if you put out another safe, you know, I guess safe gears, they were like, man, we we could have tried some. We could have and, and 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 regardless of the result, they can say like, okay, we 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 tried everything we wanted to try. We I weren't you, afraid, we didn't hold back. You know? When you Look at the aspect of like what's going on with uh, aspects of of Gears Five. I think Gears Four is more traditional type of, and I didn't really play a lot of the original Gears, but I feel like Gears Five was drastically different than Gears One yeah. through Four. Uh, so you know that's where I agree with you. Take that that foundation and build on it. You know I don't think they should go too far away from that foundation because it is the last Gears and. Even if you sh do this expansive, you know, changing how things are, you got one game. You can't really capitalize on anything else. So to me, uh, you know, I'm not saying play it too safe. I do think they need to play it safe enough to where it feels like Gears. That's the biggest thing because I, I, you know, big fan of Final Fantasy. I feel like Final Fantasy has been very underwhelming for the past like 10 years besides 7 Remake. And, and to me, you look at these franchises that they kind they try to bring more players in and it ends up isolating the players that actually got them where they are and they don't pick up new players in, in general anyway. Yeah, man. But, um, yeah, hopefully we, uh, see more. Um, hopefully they're not just talking, um, about gears. Cause I, I miss gears. Like I said, it's been, it's been a while and hopefully they execute, uh, with this one. Yeah, um, me, me and Smooth, uh, we we played, we played Gears Five. We got a review copy, and I remember the game worked just fine until until the game went live. Remember? Oh yeah, yeah. Got, All the bugs <laughs> came in since we lost. Yeah, well, it's not the bugs. The game was 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 online, like even the uh, the the co op aspect of it. Yeah. So when the servers were pushed too hard, uh, it just would not work for us. We couldn't connect. It was laggy. It was a very bad experience. And like Coalition, will do that again. Yeah, um, I'm just trying to think where we left off. So we talked about uh, obviously Let's talk about next gen, and that's all. Next gen and with the Xbox 2026. That rumor that Jeff Grove oh, started. Lord, <laughs> <laughs> that, that I mean, that's what's being talked about. Um, yeah, I did see a couple uh, videos on it. Um, it's like, oh, you like the uh, the shirt grown woman gaming got you sent us. Oh, yeah, what's good? That's uh, Chief Kratos, uh, Gerald, and uh, who's that? Is a Link? Who is this? Link. I have no okay, Link. I can't is. see you. Does that look like Link? That's Link. That's definitely Yeah, Link. this yeah. is Link okay. sideways. Oh, okay. I think it looks like a more like adult mature, version, like, mature version. Yeah. And th this is the Link from Twilight Princess, not Breath of the Wild. Right, or... right, right. Okay. <laughs> um, Oh, the 2026 new Xbox yeah. launch. Here's what, here's what I don't like about a lot of these rumors, right? A lot of these rumors, I miss when rumors used to come from, like, better, like, just better sources. It, it felt like rumors at, at one point came from, like, they actually came from people working for the companies. Yeah. And now it's coming from... Rumors, you know, before it, it wasn't normal for the rumors to come from the journalists. True. So, yeah. I, so I'd be like real skeptical because even though a lot of these journalists, yeah, they, they have connections to people at these companies. I don't know. Sometimes it just feels like you wake up in the morning, you see a rumor and it's literally from from out of nowhere with n no practicality. It, it seems to not really make sense. It's just it's not logical. It's just out of nowhere. And it's just, it, it, it feels like lit, a lot of the times it just feels like a random person that me or you know just made yeah. it up and just put it, and then, and, and then put it out on Twitter. And then somebody else co signs it. 
and then it becomes like a thing. I feel like that happens a lot. Like it, it takes one cosign after a random person puts out a rumor, and now it takes it, 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 it you know it takes on a life of its own to where because that that whole 2026 thing it was it was very quiet you know when it when it first was put out there mm-hmm. and then you saw people like Tim Dog talking about it and then and then people proposing it as as if it's a real thing and they want it to be real and I'm like yo how did we get here from just one random per- I don't know and th- th- cuz their sources and their their where they're getting this stuff from doesn't seem to be concrete enough so and and also why like why would what's the point of doing that in 2026 i there are i i can think of a few advantages but i can think of i think there's way more disadvantages yeah. what why even and 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 okay technically they 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 may say that they're not working off of actual generations anymore mm-hmm. it's just a continue there there's generations there y'all are not going to like just disappear generations we're still gonna we're still gonna like you know separate things by generation and so i I just don't know what what i I see i think there's just more cons than than pros to doing that and being that this generation was already technically felt it felt shortened because of covid so that's why people be like yeah it's 2023 but we don't feel like we had these consoles for three years at least i don't i don't yeah it, it's really felt like a year and, and some change because of because of even though I got I got our stuff date you know I got my my console day one still a lot of the things were like delayed and yeah the the, but, the the real fruits didn't really come like until yeah. like recent which is that's why I'm like uh, dude <laughs> I, well, I don't want it either but I, I do think that you know we got to understand that like not every console generation is like last console generation and the one before that like up until how long was the xbox one uh the xbox 360 uh generation that was like what eight years the the mm-hmm. yeah the og xbox was like the shortest which was four it years it was like it was like four or five <laughs> uh my thing is like so we what six like i, I mean it's coming out 2026 supposedly so let's be real here that's getting delayed to probably 2027 so it's probably coming out 2027 do you think that's like too soon at that point no um because it's seven to eight years seems about uh the average and whatnot i get the logic and the concept that's being reported and just to get ahead of playstation and like break the cycle so they're not like you know, PlayStation versus Xbox is just, oh, there's a, a, a new console out, right? Um, they managed to do that successfully with the 360. Um, and the PlayStation came a year later. Nintendo obviously does, they're on their own pretty much cycle that does not, you know, align with, you know, PlayStation and Xbox releases. Uh, so I can see why. Because every time Xbox is paired with PlayStation, um, regardless of what they do, good or bad, you know, Xbox is not looked at in a positive light. It's not as successful. It's because I, it's because, like I said, there's there's a pro and con to like each side that you consider. OK, you launch early. You're beating PlayStation to the quote unquote next generation. Mm-hmm. But are you but are you really right? Um <laughs> And then it's like, it's like the con, the, the con, the pro is that you, you, you beat them there. The con is that you're potentially, even though it's not selling spectacular, mm-hmm. you're killing your own console earlier also. So that all that investment, that R and D and all that stuff, it, it's going to feel like you're putting out a, just a pro console. Yeah. I, I feel hey, like so, you do it in 2026. So let me ask you this. If they have the games right, uh, you know, we don't know. We got to see these games. Mm-hmm. And because people say they Xbox needs to make drastic measures. If they got the games and they forced a reset on the console generation, one thing they would have is that advantage over a couple years. Because at that point, you know, it's going to be PlayStation. They either drop it in 2027, if it does come out in 2026, even seven, that's still what, two years? 
from when the um, two three years from when the PlayStation Five Pro came out. Mm. Like if they drop in twenty twenty six, PlayStation can definitely cannot fight that. Like they they they're gonna have to just hold on to whatever they're doing, get the get their games out. But to me, their mindset's like we'll get like two years on the market where PlayStation can't res- they can't respond because we choose we chose not to make a pro and just launch next generation in 2026, which is like probably a year, two years too soon. Uh, and, and it's just like, they're like, we're going to force a reset. Cause like people say, that's a bad idea. Look what the switch did. You know, they got their ducks in order and then they forced a reset. They went from the Wii U to the switch. And, and to me, if they got the games and that's it, they got the games and they force a reset Let's be honest. There ain't nothing better in this industry than than a, a brand new generation, not a mid gen, a brand new generation. If they got the games, and, and to me, I'm I'm looking at other things they could do. They could launch the same day Call of Duty comes out. Put Game Pass, say, play Call of Duty, brand new Call of Duty. Go out there, buy a console, day one, you can play Call of Duty. It just come on. And to me, I'm looking at it too. Like you launch it the day of Call of Duty, you put a lot of marketing behind Call of Duty that can do some numbers. Now, is that going to win them that generation? Probably not. I mean, technically, they will, they will win by default if you're counting but, generations. Uh, eventually, right. PlayStation will come out with that generation. Yeah, eventually. I think, I think Xbox is, if they get the games correct, it's like everyone says there's nothing Microsoft or Xbox can do to combat PlayStation's world dominant brand. But if you're the only one on the market with a brand new console, you're not really competing at that point. Mm. And that's if they're willing to cut soon too, because they can't have like three or four years where there's cross play games. Like you can have some cross play games, Bruh. but they're gonna have to have a certain amount of games like PlayStation's done where you know you got the the Ratchet and Clanks, the Returnals, where it's like these are or Xbox, whatever they're going to call it, games. And this is why you need a console. By the time the PlayStation comes around, they're going to... And that There's a con. Cons, like BG said, now you gave PlayStation the time where you took advantage of it. Now PlayStation's used that time to 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 figure out how they're going to respond. Because that's a lot of time. If you, if you sit, let PlayStation sit around for like a year and a half, sure, there's going to be certain aspects of the next PlayStation that, that are locked and def, uh, uh, defined. But if they have more time, they'll be able to, to loosen some of that stuff up. And, and that's why I feel like, you know, it's good for them. I do. I, I think, you know, especially if Blade does what it's supposed to, Outer Worlds 2, because I think that's around the time we'll probably see that. We'll probably see Elder Scrolls 6 around that time, Blade around that time. If these games do what they're supposed to and they're on brand new hardware, I think they'll get more attention and more publicity than anything they can do on the Series S and X right now. And th- not to mention, if they come out alone, we can get rid of that Xbox Series S. I don't. Ne- we don't need another one of those. Bro. You're out on the market alone. You don't need to have a weaker console at that point. I think the thing is, is that you're looking at it one way, but I'm looking at it how Xbox. The Xbox is the closest thing to a console version of an iPhone. Uh, when the Xbox released their next console, it's not going to feel like a, a new generation. It's going to feel like, even though it's not in a pro, it's going to feel like that because their stuff is all cross compatible. But, you know why you feel that way? Because they took a long time before they before they cut the cord. Yeah, you know, but the thing is, I don't think of... they're going to cut the cord. No, you got to think, think about the, the think Series X. The Series S has a lot more life in it than even the Xbox uh, One has. So my thing is, Xbox can launch this shit like next year and still be in the same predicament because at the end of the day is that the games are just going to run. Whatever game that they're targeting... Their games are going to target is going to run on the next platform. The platform is going to run on series. I don't think they're going to be a cutoff where they're going to. I don't think they're going to come out in 2026, 2027. You don't think they're going to have any exclusive games. That, you think they're I, all going to run on both. I do not believe Mac, Mark Morris. I don't believe Microsoft will release a console in 2026 or 2027 that plays games that's made by Xbox that can't run on a series X. Guarantee it. You're It'll wrong. Be, I, I guarantee you're wrong. I guarantee, that, I guarantee that, you're wrong. I think I can't. I think the fed base would guarantee you're wrong. People complain about everything, but that's, so that'll definitely be one of the things they, they complain, they complain about. Um, Because 
it's because it yeah i mean most people they, they the, the split is more people are on series s so i i imagine like the complaint would be um you know i don't even care about this this uh more powerful console because i obviously don't care about the x i just wanted the s to play these games and now and that's why they got it. that's why they got to draw a line in the sand and say but this game can't play that that console can't play these games but that's a dangerous game bro that's it but but what what is more of a dangerous game than with the shit they doing now i mean damn like so by the time the fucking series x hit his prime a new they get cut off here's the thing smooth here's the thing none of that shit matters nothing is a dangerous move if you have games that people want to play if they have compelling games and they draw a line in the set and said, this is where, what, what, that would be the ninth generation. Bruh, you telling me or all the, the think, so think about, think, think yeah. about this. All the games that we've seen in the last couple of years are literally launch titles for the next consoles. And these are the games that are supposed to bolster game pass. So you're telling me these games, people got to buy into by buying a new console and then subscribing to game pass. Instead of these games, just bolstering game pass well, I, on the existing well, platforms. The they got. Halo infinite, not on last generation. Yes, it is. It is? Oh, shit. Yes. Uh, wait, wait, is it? Yes, Halo Infinite was on the last. Xbox One. Was, yeah, it was. It was, was. It is. That was yeah. the issue we were having. We were saying that the, the yeah, game. Yeah, it is. The Xbox One game. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is the Xbox look, One. Look, I, I get what you're saying on that, but I do honestly think if they have confidence in these games, they're going to draw a line in the sand. Because at the end of the day, gamers can say whatever the fuck they want. If they got games that they want to play, they'll go out there and buy that shit. Am I wrong, VG? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there's there's now if they don't have the games, then yeah. then hide behind the Xbox Series S and X. Do good all you want. Use everything. You can get away with anything when you have good games. Um but I'm trying if, to I'm trying to if Elder Scrolls comes out and it hits like it's supposed to, uh, Outer Worlds 2 comes out and it hits like it's supposed to. I'm not saying don't have cross gen games. I'm saying that the most compelling ones will be on the only on the next gen platform. And I'm, and I'm telling you, if they release a new Xbox console in 2026, from 2026 to 2028, there's gonna be cross gen games until because the I'm, PS6 okay, I'm, come I'm, out. I'm, I'm, because I'm thinking about it. I'm but you, you're you're taking now. this perspective and you're making it. Titanfall was only on the Xbox One. Now, I released that on the 360 as well. But wasn't it later? Uh, like, yeah, a, a month, months later, later, later or something like that. Yeah. Hey, I get it. That's still technically like how you to your thing. Uh, Dead Dead Rising Three, Rise of Rome. There was games that was only on Xbox. You're taking this generation and applying it to everything. Every generation because this has had was the generation that they wanted to start their compatibility. Because this is the generation where they wanted to start the whole compatibility, where they want to break the and, barriers of generations. And you're, but that's still going to be the thing. When you buy the next Xbox, you'll be able to play all the Xbox Series games and all the Xbox One games and all the 360 games and all the Xbox games. But if you want to play the games that were built for that platform, you're going to have to buy that platform. If they were in that mindset, Starfield would be on the three uh, the Xbox One right now. They would continue still port those games to it. If you want to get technical, smooth, who dropped who dropped last gen first? It was Xbox. They dropped it, like, what, two years into the generation? They're like, we are not making any more games for the Xbox One. They will always be on the Series S and X. And to me, if you got the good games and you're still trying to uh, uh, to to have the previous ones on, because at that point, why would it... You're literally... If they do that and they make everything cross-play, then they shouldn't have even done it. Because what's the you, point in draw? One second, uh, yeah. BG. Yeah. What's the point in launching early if you give no one excuses to buy that shit? Just being new. It's like, no, that's <laughs> not enough. That is not enough. 2026 is technically in, in two years because it's about to be 2024. None of those exclusive games you talk about can be anything that people know of now or has been announced. Because if you if you literally people know about it now and then it comes out in this exclusive on another platform, I think you. I think Elder Scrolls Six is only on next gen. I don't think you could do that, bro. People, because there's people who bought an Xbox now that's already (laughs) anticipating that game. Then, but but they haven't put no logos on anything. They haven't, but. People's expectation is that it doesn't I'm matter. Be able to but play like Elder I said, BG, if these this. games don't hit, then they can't do that shit. People are gonna revolt. 
But if Elder Scrolls 6 comes out, get a 94, 95, Bethesda has re uh, brought back their old Elder Scrolls formula and they did a good job. No one's going to give a fuck if they have to buy a platform. Now, if the games suck, then that will be an issue. I'm just saying, so one of the bro. reasons we get PlayStation so much slack is because no matter what, we know their games are going to be mildly good to great. 60 and we'll give them that slack. 60% of the games Xbox revealed between the years of 2019 and and now are coming out in the okay, years they, that this console is supposed to launch. How many studios they don't have? Or how many studios they have they ain't announced shit? Hey, man. I, hey, they I would love to see them do it. <laughs> it would be, they it would be great put, to watch. Have they put a platform on Cl uh, Clockwork Revolution? Yeah. So they put Series you, S and X and not just Xbox. Yes, there's a logo. Then you cannot make that clockwork game exclusive to the next generation. <laughs> you cannot do that. They I'm would telling you, that game may come out you anytime show, soon. You show you showed the game at a showcase for current gen. <laughs> so you can't I, but I not have here's it the on thing. current gen. Here's, here's the thing. How so you're telling me right now that when this platform was announced, the Xbox One, that no developer no publisher just canceled the last generations now that yeah, you're, you're telling me that dead they rising dead de uh if i remember correctly dying light 2 did it Dying Light 2 am i wrong mm -hmm. rise yeah. in a row they just drop the last one yeah but the last uh, it's not, it, not the knights did that this generation uh, right that's there. what i'm saying yeah like, look you, you guys act like this isn't this isn't done every generation. But that's the acceptance. It's not the rule, bro. Like, I don't, like... There's a lot that do it. Let's go back to the Xbox 360 and Xbox One generation. But it's it's a little... I think I do think it's a little bit different because the, even though those multi-plats people were looking forward to them... Look, Clock, I, I, Clockwork I, I Revolution is up in the air, but I can almost put a... Put a I can almost guarantee you that Elder Scrolls Six is on next gen only. Uh, we even we even got a, a any form of date, any form of logo. They showed us something like six years ago. All right, so pro, so so Elder Scrolls Six and Project Mars. We're probably Mar not going to see that game. To Elder Scrolls Six and Project Mars is going to be the only two games. And, I, and, and they literally I, just said Blake doesn't even have an Xbox logo on the motherfucker. I, I think I think it goes against everything that Xbox and Phil Spencer preach. You know, as far as everything everywhere yes. wherever you want it we're yeah. not no borders no barriers i think it goes against no, their 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 mindset right. has always been you have access to it no matter where you're playing from your phone to the iCloud they've never said you could play cuz in that case you could play all the games right now on the Xbox 1 that's not the case they dropped it fast 2 years in the generation they dropped that shit that's never just, been just because their they don't messaging. sell the console before. Uh, their messaging is you can play anywhere because of the services we offer, not because you own the next gen or hard, last gen hardware. It's it's a disruption in in the system of what people expect because and that's people, something okay, people, Xbox needs. If they could they, like they, we can't they, sit they there the and say they need they can't play so they need they can't play safe forever. And then when they when I suggest doing something that's disruptive. Oh, they can't do that. Oh, they wouldn't do that. Uh, it's it, like I said, it's 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 disruptive in a way. I don't know if people would like because people's expectations is like, OK, a new generation comes right mm -hmm. after six, seven years. Yep. Even when that six, seven years happens, um, there's still going to be some things, some games that are cross gen. And, and that's and fine. Then, I didn't say that all games yeah. would be next gen. I just right. said that there will be. Some of their best games would be next gen only. Some of them best games, people are gonna gonna be expecting them on the platform they have now. But and, and, know, and like, I feel you on that. But that's not how the world rotates. It's just not. Like, okay, question to you, BG: If Xbox Series Two or Xbox S or X I'm or V it. or T came I'm out and it. said, "Yo, we ain't giving you no next gen exclusives," you buying that shit? No next gen. Oh, no next gen exclusives. None at all. What do you mean? Like, I don't, that, that concept. Uh, like, you can play every game we have now on the Xbox Series S and X. No next gen exclusive. You buying that shit? I still I, get I, it. I would still buy it expecting do you think the masses would buy it though do you think the masses would buy it i buy it it would be a day one no matter what the only way now if they ain't going to draw sand and have a bunch of games like i'm not even saying like a masses like two three games at launch which i think's reasonable 
and, and throughout Technos. like the next couple years they have like a game or two every year that's coming out for the uh for that gen only and then they start completely drawing the line in the sand i think that's reasonable but if Let they're going to come it. out there and say everything's going to be for the series that's the next what's the point of releasing in 2026 hey let, let them do it i'll be here to see how it works out um, now obviously if their games aren't compelling and no one likes them they can't do shit just to give you a heads up xbox managed to sell a uh, next generation console with no next gen games this happened before it just happened two years ago they had no exclusive for the well, xbox series x and s the, the they xbox series x and s was carried so... by backwards compatible upgrades I, it, like but, and i get that but look where they are now getting outsold in regions 10 to 1. so what good did that do them I'm just saying is like people were expecting Halo Infinite day one until it got delayed. But the, I got what you're saying. What did that do? But that was going to come out for Xbox one anyway. Oh, yeah. 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 Now, do you so you want to sit here and tell me with a straight face, BG, if if Halo Infinite was able to come out day one and it was only on Xbox Series S and X, it wouldn't have been a compelling buy to go out there and buy another, uh, the next gen hardware. Yeah, it would have been. Would've so been. It, that, that's my point. I don't understand this lost concept where there there's a next gen exclusive only game, dude. Because like 2026 are... is in two years, and there's games that we saw in 2020 that's not here yet. That's probably coming out it, it, in 2026. And, and, and I feel you, but I'm telling you, if you think they are not above dropping logos off of shit just to have a compelling launch lineup, you are mistaken. Blade uh, doesn't even have an yeah, Xbox yeah. logo on the box. Hey, let them do it, man. I don't. I don't. Think okay. gonna, I think people would kill. Elder Scrolls because, has because, never been announced for platforms. Because look, because the uh, last thing I'll say on this is 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 uh, Xbox is known to reverse decisions they've made on smaller stuff than that. That's my thing. <laughs> Like and, 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 things, if, things that I felt like they could have easily stood on and said, "Screw y'all, we don't care how you feel." They they you know reverse those. So the, something like this, I feel like they would be a, a little bit in, too intimidated to even try it. But the thing oh, is, is it's like I said, they've never had a lineup to have they now. Now if the games are trash, they can't do none of this. But if they have compelling games and they have faith in these games and these games do well and they're they they're received well. They could easily make those decisions because they know those people are going to buy those games regardless. That's why PlayStation does the most craziest shit known to man because they know that regardless what they do, gamers don't have a backbone and they don't stand on their square. I also think, last thing, I also think they would have more leverage if the games also were not on PC. I think that would give them a little bit. I feel bit you, but I, I, that is the thing I don't think they'll get the budge on. They'll, it will come out for PC and Xbox. Yeah, I'm just saying people, a lot of people will be like, screw y'all. I'm going to get it on PC then. And, some, and, and, and that, that's fine yeah. because most likely those people are going to buy it on PC anyway. Possibly, yeah. If they, if, they had, if, they had a, if they had a rig to play those games anyway. BG, when's the last Xbox game you bought? Uh, that would Redfall, yeah. And where'd you play that? You on? bought Red Bull? Yeah, I bought that PC. with money. <laughs> yeah, if if PC. if if they came out, uh, you know, Elder Scrolls Six was next gen only, and would you even like even if you had an Xbox BG, I know you would still buy that sucker on PC. Yeah, there's there's yeah there's a, most games I still buy on PC. Yeah, that that's my point. Uh, it don't matter what those people say because they already made the decision. They going out there and throw and, and throwing glass rocks because they had nothing to stand on in the first place. They weren't going to put their money where their <laughs> mouth was. It, it's easy to boycott something you don't give a fuck about. That's all I'm going to say. I can't let, believe don't you. Don't argue smooth. Let, let Xbox do it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I still can't believe you bought Redfall. On P I, mean, I'm not saying, I mean, hey, you know, more power to you. But like, that's the one Xbox game hey. you buy is Redfall. Wow. <laughs> I, had I, I had it pre-ordered on steam already and yeah yeah you did have a bet that it would rate higher than starfield right <laughs> yeah i did think it would from that first uh that was based on the first trailer because remember that that first redfall trailer was fire yeah it don't look nothing like that final result. <laughs> how, how would you feel that we actually played that damn game <laughs> that's Please crazy fire. Oh, you. Oh, you mean the the. the we version. we we played the, like the the thing, uh, the preview, and, and it's like they took a vertical slice and just 
amp that shit up like everything you could think of up uh, ads everywhere like when i was editing that i was like yo maybe i was wrong with redfall game came out no i wasn't <laughs> all right well we our time is up we hit the 90 minute mark uh so you know you know thank you uh to bg for showing up to this episode of playing xbox always good to have you looking forward to return to the weapon wheel I actually got to find out, Do we? can we still get Weapon World t-shirts, those classic ones? My aunt had a fresh uh, green one of uh, the classic ones we had with the characters and stuff like that. I'm like, where the hell did you get I that? I don't, I don't even <laughs> have that character art no more. I would probably have to look deep down for that. I don't even know. I don't have that art no more. Yeah, man. That, I, I was at my, I had a, a fresh clean one. I was like, damn, I kind of actually want you to send that to me because I was like, that's the freshest one because all my ones is faded and beaten and eaten by moths and shit like that. So uh, it's... Real, real quick, it was Jeff Grubb who's, who in, initially came with this? This 2026? It, it, was, was, it, was, it was Jeff Grubb, and I, I'm pretty sure, I don't know, don't quote me. And I think... Um, Dustin checked with his own sources. And yeah, G- Jeff Grubb, uh, Red Gaming Tech, and I know Dustin reported on it, but it originated from Jeff Grubb in one of his uh, podcasts. All right. I think he was on Xbox Era when he said it. I don't know why. That's possible. Um, all right, then. All righty, all righty, all righty, then. But yeah, man, BG, thank you. Appreciate you. you got anything you owe? Oh, oh, uh working on or you know before there, any updates you got what should uh, we expect in the new year uh i mean i haven't you know some people know this but we are going to i have a i'm gonna have a new uh overlay new template since we are gonna be uh at least at least part-time on camera um people don't know that yet i haven't really said it to anybody uh besides the group yeah i don't even think the discord knows but yeah we're gonna we're gonna be you know uh more on camera got a new template and everything like that it looks really you have like Uh, a template for that and a template for like just the discord icons yeah i got both i got both of them redone um so i i i don't know how i'm gonna feel if i actually want to do it every single week be on camera every every single week i don't know because you know being on being on camera is a little bit more work that comes with it. It is. You know, you're on, you're Take, on taken from someone that's on camera every yeah. fucking week. <laughs> yeah, it's people. People think both both think doing both things are easy. Being off camera is still tiring. Being on camera is even more work. You know, I definitely know that people. I will say, being off camera, I feel like I have more control. Like I can go. Like I can just take my uh, Starfield headset and like do stuff while I'm talking. But like, if you're on camera, you're pretty much stuck there. Yeah, so because then they know um, you're not there. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I got to see the reception to how how people you know how people you know receive it um, to determine how often we're gonna do it. Because I don't I don't think I want to do it every every week, but we'll see. Um, what else? I would do it on yeah, like I'd, big big shows, like big big shows that you know is gonna uh, at like least once a giant month. leaks or something. Yeah, we're gonna start out at least once a month. Um, so yeah, and uh Yeah. Yeah, that I think that's really it for new for for the podcast. Yeah, what you could do is you could uh put it in a tier. What? It's like Yeah, you, more, if you, more. if if you keep a certain amount of Patreon oh, here, okay. uh yeah. you you you're uh you do the face cam things. Yeah, I was because Patreon used to have milestones, I was going to do that, but they removed milestones and said just use the tears for it. Yeah, so. yeah, I was looking for milestones. I don't know why people be taking like the most basic ass like fucking features, features away from something that literally I don't understand why they would do it. Like, yeah, I looked it up the other day. It said, "Yeah, we removed it." <laughs> I was like, "All right, <laughs> uh, Attic, what you got uh, going on into the uh, new year?" Because like, obviously, the next time we do this is going to be. 2024 well i've been working on the attic arena channel that's my streaming platform i'm going to be streaming a lot more stuff i'm I'm streaming boulders gate 3 um on the the 30th i'm saying that because i I don't know when's this go up pg tomorrow morning what's today are you gonna do it on are you gonna do it during the the weapon well thing 
and um, put it on Patreon and then uh, make it go <laughs> make it premiere during Weapon Wheel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I'm doing that right now. So it's gonna be interesting. Yeah. That's what's up. That's what's um, up. Yeah, and we yeah we may not come back. For, you know, it, it depends on what happens. Um, how active that, that I, I can't imagine the first week in january could go crazy i can't imagine that would be that would be nuts so yeah maybe the 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 second week in january could go up to the third we'll see but guaranteed by the yeah well the whatever that date i said was yeah so all right oh what you hey to make another patriot here <laughs> yeah. my, uh, my wife loves loves it she loves this time where there's no podcast yeah i can imagine oh i'm sure my girl has been enjoying no podcast too. Um, and, and, and the viewers just got to understand, bro. Like we, you do it like at least forty something episodes out of the you know fifty something week year. Like, bro, it, it, it's it takes a toll. So people got to re- just understand. That's why I don't understand when people get upset when like you ask for like basic shit like likes. It's like motherfucker, you don't yeah. understand how much time we have to take out to doing these things yeah. like it's one thing to like be like you know i i personally want you know this or that and if you don't want a super chat that's one thing but it's like like getting mad because people ask you to like after you've watched hours and hours of free content is just wild to me yeah there's a bunch of sundays where like there's a family event i couldn't go to um and granted like if it's something like i absolutely am going to go to this I can't. I cancel the podcast and be like, "Listen, I got to go to the baby shower. I got to go here." I definitely do it, but there are times where there's like a family thing, and I'm like, "Dang, I, yeah, I can't go. I got. I got to do the podcast." People don't be thinking about that. You literally lose time with your family. So. Yeah, now nah, it's it's a lot of work. That's why I can't maintain the podcast. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, uh, we will see you guys. You know, next year. Thank you uh, for tuning in. Thank you for supporting the Patreon and supporting the podcast. Uh, we'll be back soon. Well, Weapon Will, and you can catch uh, Play Xbox next week. As always, Xbox is the best box. I am the best bot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. We are out of here. Peace.